Spider Mall, aka an Omni Mall or a Craft Anything Mall. Uh, this one's been called the Spider Mall because, well, all the circuit connections look like a damn spider web. This was an absolute pain in the ass to create. Basically took an entire 10 hour stream with people from the community helping out. And uh, it was a huge amount of effort trying to get it to where it was. We went down several, we, we chased a lot of wild geese on this one and went down several false paths before we found the correct one. But we basically have this working where we want it to work. So here's the overview on how it works and what it does. So what this does is it takes the list that you're giving it in the constant combinator of what you want and it will cycle through that list trying to craft each thing. If it finds something that it can craft, it will stop on it and craft it until it reaches the amount in the uh, that's specified in the constant combinator or until it runs out of ingredients and can't craft anymore. If it can't craft, if it doesn't start a craft within five seconds of switching to an item, then it switches to the next one. That timer can be easily adjusted. We chose five seconds because it seemed to create the least issues and uh, give it the smoothest operation overall. But the way this is coded, you ideally should be able to set the timer lower if you want. However, the array is dynamically sized, which means that if there's 40 items given to craft, you know, when it crafts 30 of them successfully and there's only 10 left, it will only cycle through those 10 and won't cycle through the 30 that it uh, has already crafted to completion. Okay, so this is a bit of a mess. So we're going to go down here where I have exploded the circuits a bit. And I've tried to separate them out and label them to make it a little clear, a little more clear as to what's going on here. All right, so let, let's start. So first we have the constant combinator down here. This is our item chooser where we set our items. This is compared to what's in the robo network. And if there's something in here that's not in the robo network, then it sends those values out. As you can see right now, it's sending almost everything out because this is not hooked up to a wider network. From that, we create an array here where we count the number of signals in the array and we also select an input from the array using index i. So if we have 40 items we want to craft, we have an array size of 40, and the i will increment, you know, 1 through 40, and then reset. And that brings us over to here to the incrementer. The incrementer increments every 5 seconds. It will increase i until it reaches up to what c is, and then once it reaches c, it will reset back to 0 and start all over again. The incrementer is based off this timer here. This is the timer circuit right here. This is what determines how long the period is. We've chosen 300 ticks, which is equal to five seconds, as I said. You can adjust that value down if you want. I'll be adjusting it down in a minute for it to demonstrate something. But generally, the operation has been a bit smoother when we've had it a bit longer because the way this works is that when this is crafting or it sees the stuff in the logistic network that's available, then it suspends the timer. That's where the W signal comes in, the work signal coming out of uh, the assembler here on that red wire. And what can happen if you set the timer too short is stuff can be moved into the assembler so it's no longer in the logistic network. And before it actually starts working, um, the timer, you know, cycles and will switch to a new recipe. So... You know, you, you can experiment with that if you want, but because the array is dynamically sized, having a slightly longer timer, like five seconds, is essentially a non-issue. So, this just goes T to, up to 300, you know, back, and then outputs, um, and, and outputs that T value to the output, and then this is where the incrementer actually happens. When the T actually reaches 300, it outputs I for a single tick, and then this... When it, it, this is um, short circuited as well as the timer, and when that uh, I, uh, this, this is just a memory cell basically. When that I sees that T signal coming from here reaching 300, it increments, and this is what moves through the array. This is what moves through the list. It will go through each item via I until it reaches the maximum count there. So hopefully, this part is relatively coherently explained now. 
Okay. So one of the issues we found when we started uh, making this, when we started testing it, was that once it picks an item and the bots take something from the logistic network and are moving it to the to the mall, to the spider mall, what will happen is that because they've pulled it out of the logistic network and the bots have it in transit, it will mean those items that those bots are carrying are no longer part of the logistic network. The buffer chest is part of the logistic network. That's actually the reason we're using a buffer, not a requester, because a requester is not considered available to the logistic network. A buffer is. Um, but yeah, the, the bots will be moving the items and they'll be no longer part of the logistic network and the, the machine will obviously not be working yet because the items are still in transit and it will cycle the recipe even though the ingredients were coming. So that, that brings us to up here with ingredient comparison. But before we get to that, real quick on these two combinators right now, they're relatively simple, but they're kind of necessary. This one merely is reading the ingredients. We have a lot of things set here. We have set recipe, read ingredients, and read working. And getting all those three things working together was, you know, interesting. And this one merely multiplies the ingredient count coming in by 10 and sets the uh sets the requests on this so this means whatever this is requesting it will request 10 times the amount so you know a pipe takes a single iron plate it will request well it switched before i clicked but you can see it will request 10 times the amount you can see this cycling through the ingredients as it goes through the different items uh, that, that number is also easily adjustable without issue if you want a smaller or larger buffer it's that number right there this is essentially a sanitizer. This just makes sure, uh, because what the thing is, when stuff is pulled out of the logistics network, items can item numbers can turn negative. That will mess with things a bit. And this essentially just sanitizes that output to always be positive. Okay, so onto the ingredient comparer. What this does over here is it counts the input signal from here, which is reading the recipes, AKA counting the ingredients. And then this is doing the same with counting the ingredients for um, for uh, the, for the logistic network. And what what these two do over here in this one is if that the amount of ingredients that it needs is equal to the amount that is requested. Like for example, if it needs three ingredients, it, and it says like, "Hey, these three ingredients are available," then it sends. Uh, it, it sends the it sends the W signal. The W signal is the working signal, if you remember from the assembler, and that's uh, a little shortcut that goes right to the timer and says like, "Hey, interrupt the timer." Essentially, what it does is it, it, is there are two things that stop the timer. If the machine is working, or if the ingredients are available in the logistic network, it says, "Hey, stop the timer." until I tell you otherwise, until there's no longer ingredients in the logistic network or until uh, it, you know, it hasn't done anything for five seconds. In that, in that case, you know, we'll keep cycling. And that's essentially the core of the design here. Uh, we, 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 you know, all these things come together just to make this thing, there, there's a lot of things in here just to make it not cycle when it needs to. So I'm gonna give you a little quick demonstration here of how it works. We're gonna get some uh, steel in here in the uh, buffer chest over here because we want it to stop on the steel crate because that's like the one thing in here that is one ingredient and for the sake of time I'm going to adjust the values here on the timer to be a bit faster so it cycles a bit faster and it should get to that in a minute and when it does you're gonna see it stop on the steel crate not switch to another recipe and keep crafting steel crates until it either runs out of steel or until there are 50 steel crates in here. And I think I put enough in there for it to actually hit 50. So we can see this over here hit 50, which is the specified amount. And it stops, it switches, and now it has taken steel crate out of the array and will no longer pick it when it cycles through everything. So there you go. This is a relatively complex circuit. There were, as I said, there was a huge amount of headache in, created it, in creating it. Um, and uh, 
I'm not going to say it's perfect. We basically have it where we want it, and it's, it seems to be working relatively bug-free. I mean, there's a bit of an ass, like, you know, a bit of an asterisk on that statement because as I was preparing to create this video, I actually found a small bug in the system which I fixed. Uh, it's not a major bug. It won't inter it won't uh, impact the uh, operate wouldn't have impacted the operation in a normal game, but yeah, that there was a small issue that I found in here even while just preparing this video. So unlike say the gamble circuit w video which I just put out where I feel like things are essentially more or less perfect-ish. This is something where there definitely might be some small improvements to the future, depending on what arises. But that being said, this has now been tested in multiple games, you know, my game, others' games, and we generally haven't found any issues with it. Um, so the last thing I want to do here is show you what it looks like in an actual game. And how it behaves in an actual game where everything is already established. So we're going to load my current game over here. We're going to hop over to Fulgora. And here we have the mall essentially already set up. And what I'm going to do here. So right now, as you can see, it's completely dormant. Because everything that it needs to craft in here is already in the array. Or has been removed. But if I take, say, a bunch of yellow inserters. And spam them here. And what you're going to see here is since the yellow inserters in the logistic network gets low, it's going to pick yellow inserters and craft them. You know, we only have 10 specified in here. But yeah, it's going to pick them and craft them until they're back up. Um, it's not going to craft as many as you would expect because we still have the old mall over here. But yeah, I mean, this was a little hard to demonstrate from the, <laughs> from the ground up without like, like nuking my entire base or something. But if you drop this down... In your game you will see it you know cycle through everything as needed and craft things as needed you can see it for the blue inserters over here as well if i spam a bunch of blues i don't know how many blues were in the logistic network but if i spam enough to the point where it starts to run low apparently there's more than i thought then it'll start crafting those two. Apparently there's a lot more than I thought and this was a bad choice. There we go. See, we, we kept spamming and now it's, it needs blues, so it's requested everything needed for blue inserters and it's crafting blues. As you can see, once the system is fully saturated, if something becomes desaturated, it will immediately pick that item and start crafting that and it won't, you know, cycle through 40 things as I keep saying, you know, the array is dynamically sized and right now, Blue inserter is literally the only thing in the array. So there you go. Uh, one thing I'd love to mention, very important, this was a community effort. This was the product of a 10 hour stream and there were multiple people in the community that contributed to this design, you know, bits and pieces here and there, or just like valuable insight. So I'd like to give huge thanks to Fly, Beck, Soul Adams, and Kano for helping make this a reality. Uh, th this would not have been as smooth without your guys' help, and I really appreciate it. This is really all of our effort together, and I'm really happy that we managed to come up with something, well, that I consider to be essentially this refined and this smoothly offer operating for what is one of the more difficult circuits to create in Space Age involving the new selector combinators. So, I'm Stupid Fat Hobbit. I stream at Twitch TV, SF Hobbit. I hope this helps you guys out. Thanks for watching.